I was raised Christian fundamentalist. I was taught to interpret the Bible literally. That meant accepting young earth creationism, a worldwide flood, homosexuality being an abomination, the end times being near, and the like. I believed all of it until I was several semesters into college. In my sophomore year, 2013, a member of my family, let's call them V, began selling essential oils. I didn't know much about essential oils, so I had nothing against it. I was actually pretty supportive of them for about a year. As my college career went on, I began learning things that contradicted my beliefs. I took an astronomy class that educated me on how we know the universe is ancient and how it seems to have come into being. That information was presented very clearly and by a Christian professor, so I didn't fight it. I did some of my own research and found that all reputable sources agreed with the evidence that I had been presented for an ancient universe. So at that point, I no longer believed in a young earth, but still remained a fundamentalist in every other way. Now, you might expect me to say that I made some kind of rationalization that allowed me to accept an old universe but still believe in creationism. But that's not at all what I did. I chose to push any thoughts of doubt I had out of my head any time they arose. I decided to rely on faith rather than confront any challenges to my beliefs. By summer of 2015, V decided to dedicate themselves to teaching others about and consequently selling essential oils. They taught classes about them, which I frequently attended. After a few classes, I had questions about the evidence behind all the claims I had been hearing. Those questions were met with unsatisfactory answers. From that point, these claims became more and more outlandish. They said oils could cure cancer and that the government was covering that up. They said prescription medicines could be replaced by herbs and that the human mind could control the makeup of an essential oil on the quantum level. Shift in consciousness. Uh, creates a shift in biology. I had some serious doubts about those claims, so I asked V for evidence once again, and was met with nonsensical replies. Knowing the truth about the topic was important to me. I didn't want to be ignorant of a government conspiracy, but I also didn't want to be duped by any snake oil salesman. So I decided to research on my own. In college, I studied research methods for several semesters, so I knew how to recognize and read peer-reviewed material. That's where I turned to first. Quickly, I discovered that V's claims not only lacked evidence, but had been thoroughly debunked for decades. Frustrated, I confronted V with this information. Their response was vitriolic, and I realized that my skepticism was being taken personally. I asked V, why do you cling to an ideology that lacks sufficient evidence? Why do you turn a blind eye to what is most reasonable? I've seen it personally, and it's important to me, they said. Instantly, I was convicted. I was guilty of the exact same irrationality. Why was I so readily skeptical of alternative medicine, but not Christianity? Because my faith was important to me. A silent depression filled the next several months of my life. I knew my faith deserved a challenge, but I was afraid to open a door I'd never be able to close. Regardless, questions that I had pushed aside in the past crept into my awareness. They bombarded me constantly, and eventually, were all I could think about. For my own sanity, I had to confront them. The foundation of my faith crumbled as soon as I earnestly sought the truth, regardless of the conclusion. I was faithless. The idea of living without faith was so foreign to me that I didn't even know what to call myself. Someone who didn't claim to know if God existed, but didn't have a reason to believe? What do you call that? I sought out ways to define what I believed. Soon, I stumbled across the term agnostic atheist. That was me. At the time of this video, it's been a little over a year since I took the atheist label. At first, it was hard. I was angry. I was harboring a secret that to this day, many of my friends still don't know. I'm out to my wife, my parents, and everyone new I've met since I shed my faith. Now I even have a whole network of secular friends all over my state of Texas. I lost my imaginary friend, but gained a real family. Living without faith in the past year has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. And even if I was able, I would never go back. I've been Drew from Genetically Modified Skeptic. Stay skeptical.